So this could be a really big mistake. So I've noticed a bit of a problem with the solar upgrade that we did. <clears throat> Got 260 watts on the roof, plumbed through a Victron controller, and then that goes into the Sergeant controller, and the Sergeant controller switches the inputted power between the leisure battery and the vehicle battery so that they both can get topped up. Now, the problem is, if the vehicle battery is a little bit low, that takes preference, which is you know, sensible and good, but if you also want the leisure batteries to be charged, it's not going to do both of them at the same time. I want to sort that out. Had a bit of an idea. Going to put a smaller panel, 130 watts, onto the roof and plug that through the sergeant controller so that it can switch between the leisure battery and the, uh, and the vehicle and then directly plumb the 260 watts into the leisure battery. Now, the leisure battery in this van is underneath the driver's seat and it's a pain to get to. So if I'm going to plug, uh, plumb this solar panel in directly, I'm going to have to remove the chair, bring the cable down and, and connect it all up. If I'm going to remove the chair, I thought maybe it's worth upgrading the battery at the same time. So, went online, found a uh, pretty good value <coughs> lithium 100 amp hour battery. It has Bluetooth built in so that you can monitor its charge, which is great. And actually, I got such a good price on it that I thought I might as well buy two and I might as well get an inverter. <laughs> this is now becoming quite a, uh, a big project. Um, I've never done anything like this before, so let's see how we get on. Today's plan, um, the batteries haven't arrived yet. Today's plan is solely just to get the chair off safely so that I can have a look and work out what cable runs I need to do. So let's go and have a look at that. I had a quick look at the chair. Um, it looks to me like if you swivel it to a kind of 45 degree angle, you can get to some hex screws um, and that those hex screws connect the swivel part of the chair to the base. So if we can get that um, disconnected, we should be able to lift the, um, lift the chair straight off. Now, one of the things I'm thinking of doing is because behind our chair is a uh, we can flatten the table, I might put the table down as if it's ready for making it into a bed so that when I remove the chair, I've got somewhere to just kind of lean it onto because um, I do think it might be heavy um, and there's only me at the moment. I could call for help, but let's see how I can get on on my own. So that's a, it says TT40, TT40 hex screw. This kit is actually really useful. I have it on the van and take it with me. Really useful, but, but can't fit in. Hmm. Oh, okay, still really useful. Because you can take the handle out. Whilst I remember, the rear screws are tapered. The front one are flat. So I need to remember that they are slightly different. I think there might be some bolts coming in from underneath up. So I'm gonna remove the sides and see what I can see. Okay, so we don't want the hex screw for this. We want onto Phillips. Phillips. 
Okay, I found another one. There's another bolt here that I think I need a spanner for to attack from the side. And when I, in order to get it in and out, you have to have the chair facing 90 degrees to the left. So you spin it round so it's facing effectively towards the passenger chair and uh, you can then get that screw in and out of a hole on the base. So let's give that a go. is coming out <laughs> here is a screw that comes in from underneath so I'm going to try and go in from the front and see if I can get at it I don't know if you can see but just here there's a earthing cable that slots in above a bolt or actually I suppose a nut and uh, so I need to get something in there to unscrew that nut and I think there's one on the other side as well so that's the earth cable um, which I'm going to tape up just so that it's uh, not a problem I'll leave it out there for a second it's worth mentioning that um, I think I pull myself up on the driver's seat chair quite often because now it has no bolts in, I keep accidentally nearly throwing it out the door. So uh, be careful with that once you've, uh, once you've disconnected everything that you're not pulling on it or uh, leaning on it because it will move. The two cables here, I'm not sure if you can see them, that um, I think are connecting to the, uh, the seat belt port post. Um, there's a uh, cable tie to snip, um, but uh, yeah, I can't I can't remove this chair without disconnecting. So I'm going to remove this cover and see if I can find out where to disconnect the cable from. Okay. Well, you can see the cables. One of them looks like it's got a <coughs> a little disconnector. The other one does not. So I'm going to carry on investigating. Let's see what happens when we move the chair. <laughs> As I thought, it is pretty heavy. So actually, I think we could disconnect this um, if we need to. Because I want to put two batteries in and they're not both going to fit in here. In fact, the battery, the lithium battery I've got is probably going to fill most of this space. I'm going to put the second one in the cupboard behind. And there is a cable currently running from the, um, from the charger underneath here and it comes out in here. So I'm going to remove this piece of flooring it runs all the way across just so I can see what access I've got. I don't know that I need to do this but um, it occurs to me that it's possible for the uh, leisure battery to be receiving some power from the vehicle battery system so I've turned the, I've turned the sergeant controller off and now I'm just going to 
investigate disconnecting the vehicle battery as well. Uh, probably just on the negative side. Vehicle battery is isolated and now I want to disconnect the existing leisure battery. Yes, uh, you are. I've uh, I've just I've disconnected the leisure battery, so that's uh, that's probably why it's gone off. Um, no, it's going to be it's going to be off um, probably for uh, longer than that, maybe a week or so, because I'm doing some upgrades. Okay, thanks, guys. Cheers. Bye. Uh, good test there of uh, Swift's um, response on uh, on the tracker because I've disconnected the leisure battery. Um, they've detected that the uh, the tracker's um, not responding and so uh, they've given me a call and I always forget it I forget to do it I forget to turn it off on the um, on the underground as well uh, on the underground on the uh, channel tunnel as well so I always get a phone call from Swift uh, when we're traveling to France <laughs> you can log into uh, Swift's online portal and disable it if you remember okay this is looking good because there's a lot of cable length here so the cable that comes from the sergeant um, has got this terminating uh, port on it and then the other end has got it too so they connect together and then go via this um, 40 amp fuse <coughs> into the leisure battery and what I want to do is run the um, the negative or the positive it doesn't really matter back to this battery uh, and only have this one here. And there's, now that I've taken all of the um, tape off, this looks to me like there's good length on it. I'm not sure how well you can see, it's quite bright and I, I can't really see. So apologies if this is a, a terrible picture. There we go. Okay, so you can see the tape measure here. Um, I've given a bit of excess and run it through here and um, so I think about I don't know if you can see that but about four foot of cable should allow me to connect uh, connect two batteries together I found a table online for my 2000 watt inverter that um, tells you how to size the cable based on the distance between the two so we're going to put a two amp, 200 amp um, breaker between the um, inverter and the batteries. The cable size we're going to do based on a four foot run, which you need to times by two because it's there and back. So an eight foot run. We're going to use zero zero gauge wire, um, which is about 10 mil. Um, so going to order some of that um, and also the lugs to go on the end and also um, one of these hammer um, crimps to connect the lugs safely on the end of the cables. So get all those on order and uh, and then come back and revisit. Okay so the next thing to do is to get the 130 watt um, solar panel up on the roof. Um, it's a good day to do it because it's nice and sunny. The purpose of this solar panel is to charge the vehicle battery and then we'll move the 260 watt to directly charge the leisure. So the solar panel and this kit come from Craig Solar. They seem to have really good prices and they're about 19% uh, efficiency on the panel, which is good. Um, so you get a, um, 
junction box to go down into the uh, to inside with connectors. You get the four corner units and two supporting middle units, which for a, for a solar panel of this size, you probably don't need these, but I'm gonna put them on anyway, because it doesn't hurt. In order for it to fit between the two windows, I think it's gonna to have to go that way around. Right, self-tapping screws to screw these in. Pre-drilled them all, so now you should be able to just use the pre-tapped or what are they called? Self-tapping screws. I think I've changed my mind. I think I'm just going to put the four corners on. I don't think the middle two are going to help particularly, but it does make it more complicated if I use them. Right, the cables here, I want to be over at this end so that there's a shorter run to connect to the existing gland, which is over here. So I've sicker-flexed each corner. Um, I've got to be honest, because it was the uh, same sicker-flex as I used last time, uh, I couldn't get the it to come out of the tube, so I just unscrewed the end and it came out in big globs and I used my finger to spread it around, which means my finger feels a bit funny, but it's okay. Right, flip it over, move the cardboard out of the way, uh, get it pressed down, and then, uh, then we're done. I've made an error because I haven't um, unwound the cable out, so I need to lift it back up. James? James? Can you come and help me? Go to the driver's side. I'm hoping there are some snips. Thank you, that's perfect. Oh. Slightly fortunately, these will connect together. So actually, perfect distancing. I'll pretend that that was planned. Done. I've achieved a, a square root of nothing. So chuffed with that.